starting to burn. Hi, everybody, and welcome to this um, important webinar. I'm Arielle Gold, one of Code Pink's co-directors, and my guest today is Celine Lebrun Schutt. Please I, tell me if I mispronounced that. No, that um, was great who is the wife of Rami Shath, who is an Egyptian political prisoner and also a leader um, of the BDS movement. Rami is um, Palestinian Egyptian and um, has been imprisoned in Egypt for quite a while. The Biden administration said that it would be basing its US foreign policy on human rights, but this certainly um, has not applied yet to Egypt. And um, it's quite incredible conditions. But before, uh, rather than me getting into that, Celine, I would love if you would start by, by telling the story of what happened. Um, and then we can go back afterwards and talk about how you and Rami met, but um, just what happened uh, on that day in, in Egypt? Yeah, of course. So um, we are, it, it all happened on July 5th, uh, 2019. So over a year and a half ago, um, my husband was at home and I was actually just going back home when I discovered our building was completely surrounded by uh, security forces, all uh, black cladded, heavily armed. Uh, and I understood they were coming to, uh, for Rami um, because of Rami political activism. Um, I actually entered uh, our building with them. And when I arrived at uh, our flat, um, policemen were already inside. Um, Rami was standing, uh, they hadn't presented any warrant uh, and we were, Rami was asking what they were looking for uh, and if there was any way that it could help them. Um, they were not giving any answer. Um, so honestly, when this happened, all I could think of I had a thousand thoughts in my head. Uh, I've seen friends uh, over the past, the previous years being arrested uh, in Egypt. Some of them went missing for several days or weeks. Um, and so maybe this was something I was very as afraid of that they would take from me, that he would disappear um, and that I, I, I won't see him again. Like, it happened uh, with other people. Um, I was uh, able uh, to go to the toilet. Uh, I asked for it and I had my phone with them. So I was able to send a quick message to the lawyer um, telling them that policemen were in our home. And uh, then a policeman came, hit the door and uh, asked me to come out and took my phone. And from that moment, uh, until the second day in the morning, I had I didn't have any phone, uh, and I was prevented from any communication, including to my consulate. And actually, I asked uh, almost immediately to call the consulate, and the answer that was made was, "Since you want to call your consulate, well, you have ten minutes to pack a bag, and we'll take you to the airport." Um, so and. They threatened me doing this, like, and if you don't want, we'll take you as you are to the airport as well. So Rami was there that night, asked me to, you know, do what they were asking uh, to prevent any harm to be made to me. Um, so that's what I did. I packed a bag and on my way out of the flat, um, I was saying, I was about to say goodbye to Rami and that's when they told him, well, you're coming with us uh, as well. Because up until that moment, we didn't know if they were actually arrested, Ram arresting Rami or just coming to search the place and, you know, seize computers and hard disks. So, so they took Rami, uh, I told him goodbye. So him, you know, climb in a police van and me and another one. And I stayed for over 
19 months without seeing him at all. Um, so, yeah. That is um, such a, a, an intense and, and terrifying um, story. And, and now if we could go back a little bit and talk about, um, to the best of your knowledge, why Egypt targeted Rami? That's a, that's a tough question because Egypt is not saying, uh, first of all, the real reason why they arrested Rami. Like we're seeing with most of political activists, uh, they are being accused of trump up charges related to some kind of terrorism, terrorist activities. So currently Rami, like most of political prisoners, uh, prisoners of conscience in Egypt, uh, in Egypt are is faced with uh, belonging to a terrorist group, terrorist group that is not named uh, until today. We don't know what group is it supposed to belong to. Um, is accused of spreading false news, but I, no proof has been uh, ever presented uh, to justify those accusations, and is you know, being held in uh, administrative or preventive detention for almost two years now. So what we can, what we can do is only assume what are the real reasons for he, he being targeted. And for that, we can look at what was his activities before his arrest. And Rami, Rami's only activities at that time was the BDS movement uh, that has been a coordinator uh, for since uh, its funding in, in 2015. So, and 10 days before his arrest, uh, there was the Bahrain's conference. So it was basically the, a conference that was called by Donald Trump and Netanyahu in Bahrain and that was supposed to uh, address the co economic side of the deal of the century presented by Donald Trump. And uh, a lot of Arab countries, some Arab countries uh, participated in this conference, including Egypt. And Rami criticized, like any Egyptian citizen has the right to, he criticized uh, this participation. And 10 days later, later he was arrested. So, Looking at the sequence of events, we can assume that this might have been the, the thing that has triggered his arrest. But there is a long time, there is a long history of harassment against Rami. Back to the 90s, uh, when Rami first participated, for example, to the peaceful protest in his university against the first uh, Gulf War. And then for more than 20 years, it's been harassed, put under very tight monitoring by uh, security forces. So, yeah. So Rami has really, is really a well-rounded um, political activist, right? From Palestinian rights and the BDS movement to the situation um, in Egypt, him, in Egypt itself, and, and what that has been like. Um, could you tell us a little bit of how you met him? Sure, of course. Um, so Rami and I met uh, in 2014 in a humanitarian convoy that was going to Gaza in the summer during the Israeli attack on Gaza. So Rami, um, co was co-organizing with other Egyptian activists a uh, convoy, uh, bringing medicines, tons of medicines to Gaza and also hundreds of youth who wanted to go to show solidarity with the people of Gaza. So I joined this convoy and, uh, and we met. And what's it been like um, in prison? What, what's the situation been like, and especially uh, with COVID? Yeah. Um, 
So the situation is very hard. Uh, COVID, it was already very hard before COVID. So before COVID, um, I mean, since his arrest, Rami is in an overcrowded cell. Uh, and what I mean by overcrowded, it's the, the cell is approximately 240 square feet. So I don't know the size of the room where you are and where the people who are listening to us are, but that's appro approximately the size of it. Uh, and is with 10 others, other cellmates in this room. And they do everything in this room. Um, basically, so they sleep on the floor because there is obviously no space to put any bed. Uh, they sleep on the floor on covers. Um, and the space also includes, so there is a small corner with uh, where they cook uh, in a very primitive way. And there is also a shower with a hole in the middle. Uh, so it's both a shower and a toilet. Um, so these are already very unsanitary <laughs> conditions with absolutely no intimacy whatsoever. Um, and since COVID, um, Obviously, we're extremely worried uh, because the guards keep, you know, coming and going uh, in and out of the prison. So the detainees inside are at risk of being contaminated, uh, and especially that guards are not necessarily always respecting the protective measures. And this is something I was able to see with my own eyes when I went to Egypt in February. Uh, sometimes guards didn't wear, were, were not wearing a mask. Um, they were in very close proximity, um, et cetera. So, and I wanna add also that since um, May, uh, actually Rami, uh, we've seen uh, detergents being banned from the prison. Uh, why? Because uh, a, a young man called Shadi Habash, who was a filmmaker, uh, in prison because he made the clip of a satiric song uh, about Egypt, the Egyptian president uh, just committed suicide uh, by uh, drinking detergent. And unfortunately, uh, the answer of the Egyptian authorities, the authorities of the prison, hadn't been to release those youth or, you know, uh, dying in prison of despair. No, it has been to ban detergent in the middle of a pandemic, which is a complete nonsense. So I'm worried today for Rami and his cellmates and the thousands of political prisoners' health because if just one of one of them gets contaminated, they're all at risk due to the overcrowdedness of the cells. What kind of contact have you been able to have with Rami? So we've had very, very limited contact since his arrest. Um, we stayed for almost a year without any contact at all. Um, Rami was, I, we were only allowed to speak to each other uh, in May 2020, so almost a year after his arrest. Um, then we were allowed to speak a second time in August 2020. And then up until uh, last February, so about two months ago, we, had, we were not allowed any contact and I was only allowed to visit him in February. So more than a year and a half ago, uh, more than a year and a half after uh, Romy's arrest, was I allowed to see him. Um, Egypt granted me uh, the right to go uh, see my husband for about uh, 10 days. I was able to go to Egypt. I saw him three times and for about 45 minutes each. And then I came back here in France and I haven't seen him since. Um, we're writing to each other, um, but the letters are not always allowed uh, either in or out. It's been, for example, three weeks that I haven't gotten any letter from Romy. And we know that Romy is writing, but that the authorities are not letting those letters pass. And actually, 
this probably means that Romy's health is not good because the only reason they would prevent him from writing is that Romy is writing that he's not doing well. And that's something they're not allowing him to see. So we're worried. And what was it like when you when you did see him? How did his health seem or his spirits? When I saw him two months ago, he was in very high spirit. I think we both were in very high spirit. Uh, this visit came after such a long fight. Um, obviously, we both hoped that uh, we would meet each other in an airport, uh, either in Egypt or in France, obviously not in prison, uh, but yet we were very happy to see each other. Um, and so I think that took over everything else. I was able to see in his eyes that uh, is still the same strong and humorous um, man uh, and romantic man that I fell in love with. Uh, I was there during Valentine's Day. So, you know, he made a Valentine's card and invited me to dance, which might seem, yeah, <laughs> completely um absurd in the place considering the place we were in but that says a lot about his inner strengths and uh, that's giving me hope and uh, and strength to continue the fight until his freedom so we, we have a question i think folks um uh, tuning in are, are struggling to understand um why Rami uh, was an embarrassment to Egypt during the peace accords with Israel. Um, just kind of a little bit more, if you could go into a little bit more of the dynamic um, between Israel and Egypt and um, the US as well, but that made Rami uh, considered a threat to Egypt. I think, unfortunately, today the Egyptian government is just not tolerating any criticism. That's not necessarily more complicated than that. Rami criticized uh, the, the Egyptian uh, external policies uh, and Egypt just decided that, you know, that was not uh, allowed. And that's very sad, but that's what we see with on so many issues, unfortunately. And, and Instead of really looking at those people, Rami is a very knowledgeable man. Uh, he's graduated from King's College. Uh, he's a very fine strategist and political analyst. And so instead of uh, embracing uh, these people who are the wealth of this country, and um, they're just uh, jailing them. And that's true for Rami, that's true for the thousands of political prisoners who, you know, um, it's just a waste, a waste of yeah, people's life. So I think that's, um, yeah, there, I wouldn't go necessarily further than that. Um, and Rami had also this capacity of bringing people together. Uh, and I think that's also another thing that uh, Egypt, uh, maybe Egyptian, authorities maybe didn't like. Um, he was organizing, uh, and that's also another uh, issue. So Amnesty International has been working on his case, and they have a petition, and we're going to share that in the chat and encourage folks to sign on to that. And we'll talk a little bit more about what we can do beyond signing the petition in a moment. Uh, but I know the United Nations, um, also, um, the UN, UN experts have spoken out uh, for Yat Rami and called for um, his release. Uh, what other momentum has been building and how has um, this been helpful? Yeah, I mean, uh, over the past uh, 21 months, uh, we've seen an amazing campaign of solidarity uh for Rami and this campaign is growing every day and I want here to thank Cut Pink for joining the movement and all the organizations that you've uh, named and there are so many more. Um, we've seen a huge uh, movement also among lawmakers 
uh, for Rami and all Egyptian political prisoners. Um, I want, I mean, relevant to the US context, uh, last uh, October, uh, about 60 members of Congress, both senators and representatives, signed an open letter to President Sisi asking him to asking Egypt to release Rami and Egyptian political prisoners. Uh, they were joined by, by over 200 European lawmakers as well um, in a somehow in a kind of like unprecedented uh, mobilization from lawmakers on both sides of the Atlantic. Um, so that's very heartwarming. Uh, we've seen in France, for example, City, a city council recently uh, awarded Romi uh, the honorary citizenship. And so I don't know if that's something that's uh, done in the US or in other countries, but if among those listening to us, uh, you have any link with uh, your city councils, et cetera, and that's something you can also present as a possible uh, action of solidarity. And that's, that helps a lot and making Rami's story known uh, around the world. Uh, so we've seen also celebrities, uh, public figures uh, speak out. Uh, people like obviously Roger Walters, Angela Davis, um, and so many more, um, sorry, I'm forgetting the names, but Peter Gabriel. All You can find all those artists and public figures who've spoken up uh, spoken out for Rami on our uh, Facebook page and our Instagram account. Uh, they have recorded short videos that you can find. Um, so that's that's really um, there are so 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 much that happens, and uh, I hope we can do even more until Rami is released. And we're going to be putting uh, the free Rami Facebook page in the chat and we have the um the uh, free rami website in the chat as well and i want to encourage folks um within there and we also have code pink's action to members of congress which is um, also in the chat you can tweet at members of congress and what i want to encourage folks is if you go to the free rami uh, website and you see the amnesty petition you'll also see how to go a step further and how to write um, a specific letter. We know that personal contact, phone calls, op-eds, um, meeting with your representatives and others really takes actions one step further and has an incredible impact um, on cases. Now you have, there's some important dates in this um, case coming up. If you could uh, talk to us about them. Yeah, uh, of course. So the most important date uh, that's coming up, it's uh, July 5th. Um, why it's important? Because on July 5th, uh, Rami will reach uh, two years of uh, preventive detention. Law in Egypt allows uh, people to be held in pretrial detentions for up to two years, which is already completely insane. Uh, Rami is being held currently without any proof, without any judgment. We don't know if there is ever going to be a trial because he is held pending investigation. Um, so he's not formally charged uh, with anything. Um, and what we see is that in most of the cases, they're not charged at all and they're just released after years of pretrial detention. So on July 5th, it will reach the two years limit. What we hope is to really uh, secure his release before that or at that time at most, because unfortunately uh, what we see, what we've seen over the past months and years, it's a pattern of um, recycling. It's, it's not a very elegant term, but that's the term that's been given to this practice basically. Uh, when activists reach the end of those two years, the prosecutor uh, order, orders their release. But right before they are actually freed, 
they are being accused in a new case. And so they are sent back to pretrial detention for two years. And so it's a vicious circuit that never ends. And so that's what we're trying to prevent from happening today. And I want to highlight the fact that uh, Ramiz in a case is not the only one is being held in a case that's called the Hope case with uh, another 10 uh, well-known political activists and they will also reach uh, this two-year limit. And so mobilization for Rami is very important for Rami, but also for all the others who are being held with him. It's, all, it's also important for Rami's colleague uh, called Mohammed Al Masri, uh, another member of the BDS movement in Egypt, who was arrested about two months after Rami's arrest. So we can see that there is some kind of direct attack against the BDS movement in Egypt. And so we need to speak up uh, to protect those activists lawyers, human rights activists, uh, journalists who are being uh, detained today. Egypt is one of the most repressive countries and has an enormous number of prisoners and um, some of the most deplorable prison conditions. And another fact about Egypt is that Egypt receives the second largest amount of US military assistance after Israel. So we see these um, connections here between uh, silencing voices of change and dissent and support for Palestinian rights and um, alliances between the US, Egypt and Israel and financial support um, for brutal uh, military regimes. As we get ready to uh, wind down, I'm gonna bring my colleague Danica um, on because after this, we're going to, uh, Danica and I are going to talk on Clubhouse about Rami's case and the situation of political prisoners in Egypt and, and what folks can do, um, and also about U.S. military assistance to Egypt. Uh, welcome, Danica. Hello. Thank you so much, Celine, for sharing Rami's story with us today. Um, if anyone who is in the audience or listening has a question, um, please feel free to drop it in the chat or Q&A section and I can direct it to Celine. Um, but Celine, so we made this social media toolkit to help share Rami's story and his petition. I understand his birthday is coming up and there is a petition signature goal. Would you be able to speak a little bit on that? Yeah, that's true. So yeah, I spoke about the two years limit. So that's the most important date. But basically from today until that date, we're really hoping to mobilize. And another important date that's that that we're going to see is June 23rd uh, with Rami's birthday. And so it will be two weeks before the end uh, of the two years. So basically, um, we're still uh, building, but uh, we are hoping to gather as many signatures on the petition that was uh, mentioned by um, Ariel uh, and to be able to go and deliver it uh, to the Egyptian embassies uh, to make our voices heard um, before we reach the end of the two years on Rami's birthday. And we're also inviting people. So as you will see in the in the toolkit that uh, is being shared by Cut Pink, uh, on each fifth of the month, uh, also we are hoping to really use this time. So it's the anniversary of Rami's arrest uh, to really use this date uh, to speak about Rami. So if you can join us on each fifth of the month, mark it in your calendar um right now um put it on repeat every month on the fifth uh, and join us on social media by tweeting writing about Romy uh, and I also want to call on anyone here who has artistic or graphic skills and would like to contribute with artwork 
uh, hard work <laughs> and hard work as well, but with artwork uh, to the campaign, uh, please go ahead. We've had a lot of uh, people, supporters around the world sending us designs or even paintings. Uh, right now in France, uh, tens, dozens of people are actually taking pictures uh, of them holding a sign saying free Ramishas. So please join, uh, join us uh, in any way you can. Uh, you can publish directly those pictures, tag the campaign like hashtag free Ramishas or send them to us and we will make sure to uh, publish them. And for anybody that's only listening by audio, um, you can find the website, which has so many of these tools on it. It's free Rami Shath, and Shath is spelled S H A A T H dot com. That's F R E E R A M Y S H A A T H dot com. So please go there, sign the petition, use the toolkit, um, forward the petition to your friends and share it on social media. Um, as we get ready to head over to Clubhouse to um, spread this uh, campaign to more folks, um, any closing thoughts that you would like to share with us, Celine? Well. I just hope that next time Rami can be here and uh, speak to everyone here about his work. And uh, yeah, that's my hope. And uh, thank you again uh, to Cut Pink for being part of this global movement uh, to release Rami and all Egyptian political prisoners and prisoners of conscience uh, around the world. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. And anybody who's on Clubhouse, please head on over um, to join us there. Danica, if you could tell folks how to find it once we get there. Yes, one second. Let me send the link um, to the Clubhouse so people can just hop I, over there. In the meantime, one last thing, people on the website, they can also subscribe to the newsletter, so to get further calls to action and stay in touch with the campaign. So also something to flag. And Code Pink will also be sending out updates about the campaign as we get closer um, to Rami's birthday and the court date. Um, we'll be keeping um, you up to date on all of that and giving you reminders of everything to do. And I want to thank everybody for joining in. And we hope very soon, um, by this summer, at the latest, uh, to be able to be celebrating um, Rami's release. And anybody who's on Clubhouse, please join us in just a few minutes for that. It'll just take a moment for us to um, exit out of Zoom and head over there. Wonderful. Thank you to everyone. Have a great day. Thank you so much, Celine.